Father, we give you thanks when we pray. Bless us this morning as your word comes forth. Let somebody be healed. Let somebody be strengthened. Let somebody be empowered. Let your grace fall upon us like never before. In the name of Jesus. I bind any demon against our service. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon all we do. Yes, sir. Let the same power available here be available wherever people are connecting from. Let the resurrection power cause somebody to be healed, cause somebody to be delivered, cause somebody to be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody shout a big amen. Amen. Well, today is Resurrection Sunday morning. And they are Resurrection Kusiaga. And um, when Jesus resurrected, good things happened. And I believe that this morning, good things will happen. Whenever we come to God, we must come with a hunger. The things of God doesn't just move to people. It moves to the people who are hungry. So whenever we come to church, whenever we come to God, He doesn't just look at your need, but He looks at how desperate you are for a change. He looks at how hungry you are for a change. Because he comes to satisfy the hungry. He comes to satisfy the hungry. Madam, no. He comes. Whenever God comes, he comes to satisfy the hungry. So if you are not hungry, if you are not desperate, if you are not so thirsty looking for God, God can come to town. Everybody can be thanking God. Everybody can be testifying. But you will not have anything to testify about because you are not hungry. So the Bible says in Luke chapter chapter 1 verse 53 he says that he has satisfied the hungry he has filled the hungry with good things but the poor the rich in other words he says he has sent away empty so you can be poor you can be rich and come to God but if you are not hungry he will not fill you with good things so he says he has filled the hungry with good things the rich he has sent away empty so whenever you come to God and you come with the attitude that I have everything. I don't need God. I don't need anybody. Nobody must tell me what to do. How to live my life. I am okay where I am. I am okay with what I am doing. You will come into the house of God and walk away empty. So whenever God comes, He comes to fill the hunger with good things. So let your hunger be high. Make yourself hungry this morning and be desperate for the touch of God and God will fill you with good things if you believe shout a big amen nobody will live here the same as you can the hand of God will fall upon you the grace of God will be mighty upon you in the mighty name of Jesus if you believe shout a big amen and if the hands are yours you can put them together for the Lord well, I, want, I started sharing a message at the Good Friday service. Now, Good Friday, let me kick on some. And today, I bring it about two of that message. And then, Let's read a few verses. Let's go to John chapter 2. Reading from the verse number 12. The Bible says, after this, Bible says, he went down to Capernaum. He and his mother and his brethren and his disciples and they 
continued there no, not, now, oh. not many days and she be so the bible says that jesus after he had done his first miracle in cana of galilee bible he went down with his mother with his disciples with his brothers they went to Capino where he pitched his headquarters and the bible says and the Jews Passover was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem hallelujah Amen. now the Passover Passover was, was a special, special convention the Israelites used to celebrate to remember how God brought the children of Israel out of the Egypt. land of Egypt. Egypt God said because Israel is my firstborn and the Egyptians will not allow them to go and serve me I will kill their firstborn firstborn for firstborn so God killed all of them he killed every firstborn from human beings to animals. He killed every firstborn in the land of Egypt to let his people go. To let his firstborn go. Then he established it for them as a memorial that every year they were to celebrate the Passover. So as we are celebrating Resurrection Sunday just this Friday in the land of Israel they celebrated the Passover over. They remember. So when the Jews Passover was at hand, the Bible says Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And he found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and changes of money sitting. so when Jesus came into the temple he saw people in the temple they were not praying they were not worshipping but they were rather selling so they were selling oxen they were oxen in Yamponko oxen is a uh, 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 cow they were selling cows. They were selling sheep. They were selling doves. And then people were changing money. From Ghana City to maybe dollars or to euros. And uh, they were there. Nobody was talking about God. They were doing business. So the Bible says, and when he had made a scourge of small cords, when he made a, a scourge, he made like it took some ropes and made them into cords. He drove them all out. Shout it after me again. He drove them all out. Oh, shout it after me again. He drove them all out. So he drove them all out of the temple. And the sheep. And the oxen. And he poured out the changes of money. And he overthrew their tables. And he said to them that sold the doves. Take these things hands. And make not my father's house. And house of merchandise. So after Jesus sacked all these people from the temple. You know as for those who are selling the doves. He was very gentle with them. Because Jesus knew what the gentle. The, what the what the dove represents. Yes, he knew that the doves represented the Holy Spirit. He was a symbolic presence of the Holy Spirit. And whenever the Holy Spirit want to visit, wanted to visit people in those days, one of the means he uses is to come through a dove. That is why sometimes when I'm at a place and I hear doves singing behind me my window. I know that the Holy Spirit is closer and he has something special to say. You will be thinking of a way to kill the doves and eat them. Bela boys company. But when I hear them, I know that God is closer and God has something to say. So Jesus says to those who are selling the doves, take these things here and make not my father's house house of merchandise. You know, we can get to a place where we turn the house of God into a place of business. Now, what they were doing, was there anything wrong with it? 
you know, coming to sell the things needed for the Passover. So, but for a fashion. There was nothing wrong about it. She say, oh, to sell the sheep. So, but to to I, sell the cows. So, to to she, sell the dogs. So, to to money. change money. So, but she, she there was nothing wrong she about she it. Say, oh, but where they were doing it. But baby, oh, where they were doing it. Baby, oh, was no. what God had a problem and with. They should have been selling it outside the temple. Outside the courts. So that people were coming into the church. They will buy them no, and come into the no, temple no, and do their sacrifice. No, but to be selling no, it in the house, but so God had a very big problem with yeah, it. No, Jesus had a big problem yes, with yes, it. So we home. must not turn the house of God no, into a place of business, no, into a place of merchandise. No, Somebody say amen. No, amen. I mean, in churches nowadays, some people even don't go to church. When they are Sana, they have been selling in the church. It's not ready by Saturday evening. They don't have any reason to go to church on Sunday. Because for them, whenever they go to church, they are going to sell Asana. As the one sitting beside you, why have you come to church this morning? Somebody say amen. I think it's a good place to clap your hands together for the Lord. Oh, clap as if you are excited. But as Jesus was doing these things, the disciples themselves were also wondering. So the Bible says, then the disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. They had a passion. They saw that Jesus had a passion for the house of God. There are some people who don't have any passion for the house of God. When they see anything happening to the house of God, they don't feel anything. When we gather together and God doesn't come down, they don't feel anything. It feels normal to them. Everything about God is just normal. Many of you, when you woke up this morning, you didn't pray before coming to church. Many people who sang in the choir today, they never spoke in tongues even for one minute. But they came to church to come and sing. It's like sometimes we forget the reason why we are in church. If the presence of God is not there, it is useless. If God doesn't come down, it is useless. We can't live anywhere anyhow and expect the power of God to be falling whenever we gather. It doesn't work that way. If you believe, shout a bit. Amen. So the disciples remember that it was written. The zeal of thine heart has eaten me out. May you have a passion for God in Jesus' name. May your zeal for God rise this year. May you have a passionate zeal for God in Jesus' name. If you believe, shout a bigger amen. Clap your hands together for Jesus. Wow, man. Then the Jews answered, verse 18. Then the Jews answered. And the Jews were here and no. And said, and say, it said, What sign showest thou unto us? Seeing thou doest these things. So yes, they said to Jesus, yes. All these things you are doing, you are leaving more questions in our minds. If you are the Messiah, so we are the do all the miracles that the Messiah should do. So that we will know that you are the and Messiah. Jesus answered and said unto them in verse 19. He said, Destroy this temple. And in three days, I will build it. This, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it. But I will raise it again. Somebody say amen. amen. Take to your neighbor and tell your neighbor. Destroy this temple. And I will raise it again. Tell another person, destroy this temple. And I will raise it again. If you believe, shout a bigger amen. amen. So Jesus said to them, destroy this temple. And when you destroy this temple, I will raise it again in three days. 
Then the Jews. And the Jews for now. They answered and they said. Omo yi na no say. Forty and six years. Was it forty six years? Was this temple in building? And the yes see some sorry guy. And will thou raise it up in three days? And I will get that man sapping now. But just will you raise it up in three days? Now, but listen to that. Listen, listen, look at that part carefully. Shahoni you. Jesus did not say that he would destroy the temple. Yes, one can say but good and best yes sorry guy. He only said. Ni o kan say. If they destroy. Was it so? He will raise it up again. Their job may be to destroy. But his job may be to raise. So they can destroy. But he will not destroy. But he will raise whatever they destroy. But they didn't hear it well. They didn't hear it well. So the Bible says, but this speaks of the temple of his body. He speaks of the temple of his body. That if they destroy his body. If they destroy the temple of his Almost body, he will build it again in three days. Somebody say amen. amen Anything the devil has been destroying around you, you, by the time you are walking out of this place, you are receiving the grace to build it again, to raise it up again. Anything the enemy is cutting, you are receiving the grace today to pull it together. If you believe, shout a big amen. Clap your hands together for Jesus. Those who are upset, are you helping me or are you against me? Wave somebody and tell your neighbor, my neighbor. Destroy this temple. Say I saw it and I will build it again. Now, listen, sin, the person did here. Say it again. Destroy this temple. Say I saw it and I will build it again. Now, listen, sin, Lift up your right hand. Let the devil hear you, Satan. Destroy this temple. Say I saw it and I will build it now, again. Listen, sin, Whatever you destroy, now, listen, I will build it again. Now, listen, sin, say it. Let him hear. You. Say it again, Satan. Now, whatever you destroy, now, listen, I will build it again. Now, listen, In the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. When therefore he was risen from the dead, verse 22. His disciples remembered that he had said this unto them. Then they believed the scripture. And they believed the word. Which he had said. Hallelujah. Amen. They forgot the word. No more but when he resurrected, then they remembered the word. But do you know now when him, that this word that Jesus said in verse 19, know, saying, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it again, was one of the main reasons why. They decided to crucify Jesus. They decided to destroy Jesus. Sometimes you'll be amazed. And just because of the things you say, people can become so jealous. People can become so envious. People can hate you. Just because of the things you say. Joseph only spoke about the dream he had. And described the dream. The dream not even having been fulfilled. His brothers were angry at him. They hated him with passion. Just because of the things he was saying. Be careful who you talk to. Be careful who you share your testimony with. Be careful who you tell how great things the Lord is doing in your life. It is not everybody who must know what God is doing around you. There are some people when they hear about it, they will organize a group against you. So when they caught Jesus on that Good Friday, on that faithful Friday, I mean they asked them, why have you brought him? Why do you want us to crucify him? They were looking for something to say. They didn't have anything to say. Then one person stood and said, in Matthew 26, verse 61, he said, this fellow said, he is able to destroy the temple and build it again. Build it again. He was saying that he said, Jesus said, he is able to destroy this temple and in three days build it again. But Jesus did not say that. He said, if you destroy this temple, I will build it again. He didn't say, I am able to destroy the temple. He didn't say, I will destroy the temple. 
say he said, if again, you should destroy it, then I will raise it again. When people don't like you, so they twist your words. When people hate you, they twist your words. And word you said with a good mind, they can twist it against you. Somebody say amen. May the Lord deliver you from wicked people. May the Lord deliver you from treacherous people. People who are waiting to betray you. May the Lord deliver you from their hands. If you believe, shout a big amen. Anybody holding a knife at the back, waiting for the right time to stab you. May that knife fall from their hands. May that knife fall from their hands. In the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, In Matthew 27 now, Matthew, verse 38 to 40, he says, Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And the people that passed by, they reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that is able to destroy the temple and build it again in three days, like the other one, in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. If Jesus were to be the Chinese Jesus, he would have come down yes, from the cross. Jesus, the, the Chinese Jesus, when they were laughing at him, they said, Chinese now he Jesus came down. He, he came, came to beat all of them. Then after beating them, he went back to the cross again. But Jesus was not a Chinese Jesus. There's a real Jesus Christ. So they said, come down from the cross. If thou be the son of God. So they crucified him. Then verse 50. To 54. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yes, he yielded up the ghost. Oh, and behold, the veil in the temple, the veil of the temple, was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake. And the rocks rent. And the graves were open. And many bodies of the saints we slept. They arose and they came out of the grave after his resurrection. And they went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Somebody say amen. So when Jesus yielded up the ghost, when he died on the cross, the Bible says there was an earthquake. Every rock in town began to crack and split open. Then the graves of Awudome, the graves of Osu, around the Accra where he was, the graves were open. And the Bible says, when the graves were open, many bodies of the saints which slept, they arose. And when they arose, the Bible says, they came out. The day Jesus was coming out of his resurrection, they also came out with him and they went into the holy city they began to knock on the door and when somebody opened the door this was Josiah the king standing by the gate when somebody opened the door this was Joshua standing by the gate when somebody opened the door this was Deborah standing by the gate when somebody opened the door this was Elijah standing by the gate anything of yours that is there anything of yours that is God down. I command the resurrection for them in the name of Jesus. Any business of yours that died, any marriage that is dying, any relationship that is collapsing, I speak life to it in the name of Jesus. Let that relationship receive life. Let that marriage receive life. Let that business receive life. Let that thing come back to life again. Somebody's profession, somebody's career, somebody's ministry, somebody's calling, upon your life that is going down I speak life to it again let it come back to life let it resurrect in the mighty name of Jesus let the resurrection power of Christ fall upon it today may you come 
your life again. Somebody whose spirit has gone down. You are no longer happy. You are always down. I declare the restoration of your joy today in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe, shout a bigger amen and clap your hands together for Jesus. Wave somebody, tell the person you are coming back to life. Now, so I said to you on Friday, when Jesus yielded up the ghost, two spirits came out. One spirit was his human spirit. That spirit went down to hell. That was the spirit God put into him. That came out the day he came out of his mother's womb. Then another spirit that came out was the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. What came into Jesus the day he was baptized and anointed him. The Bible it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all them that were oppressed of the devil. So God was with him. That day the Holy Ghost came upon him and he stayed in him. So when Jesus yielded up the ghost, the Holy Ghost in him, he came out. And when he came out, he went into the temple now, why did Jesus tell the, tell the disciples and tell the Jews and tell the chief priests and all the people around that if you destroy this temple, I will build it again? God had taken the temple of Jerusalem as a place where he would dwell. He was in the ark of the covenant. And they had put him into the temple. And these are the people praying there. All the people singing there. All the people worshiping there. They were selling. They were doing business. Yet desecrating the temple. Defiling the temple. Destroying the temple. And God was not happy. Because of that, he sent Jesus to come down to destroy that temple. To take his presence from the temple. If we don't check the way we behave in the house of God, we can drive the spirit of God out of the church. Wave somebody tell the person, don't drive the spirit of God out of the church. Wave another person, tell the person, don't drive the spirit of God out of the church. It's a good place to clap your hands together for you. So when they drove God out of the church, God said, now I need a new temple. I need a new house. Not temple built by hands. By human hands. So he sent Jesus. That Jesus will come and die. And so when the Holy Ghost entered into the temple, he went to where the presence of God was. He tore the veil into two. And from that day, God walked out of the Jerusalem temple. And from that day, Jesus bought the bodies of men to become the temple of God. To become the temple of the Holy Spirit. So anybody who accepts Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior, from that day, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in them, comes to stay in them. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they come and stay in the person. And so the person becomes a moving shrine. You become a moving shrine. When somebody tell the person you are a moving shrine, you should not be afraid of demons. You shouldn't be afraid of juju. You shouldn't be afraid of the idols of your city. You shouldn't be afraid of the workers of iniquity. You shouldn't be afraid of wicked people. Because God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, for me what we call the greater one, is now living inside you. Every form of fear should leave you. You should not walk around in fear. You should not walk around intimidated by any demon. I come to tell somebody today, any demon of fear that troubles you, we command that demon of fear to leave you now. In the mighty name of Jesus, let that demon of fear leave you now. Let that demon of fear leave you now. Let that demon of fear leave you now. If you believe, shout a bigger amen. And clap your hands together for this. 
Don't walk around always afraid. And I'm now we strong. You are a moving shrine. Will somebody tell the person you are a moving shrine? Brothers, all of you come down, come and sit down. Move on. Will somebody again tell the person, my neighbor? You are a moving shrine. Somebody say amen. Come up your hands together for Jesus. Now Jesus himself, yes, sir, 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 no. when he got into the temple, and, sir, sir, and he was scattering the things in the I temple, was saying, yeah, was sorry, no. he wasn't doing that by himself. But he, was no. he was doing it by the Spirit of God. Yeah, no, 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 no. That was inside him. I, I went, no, no. Second Corinthians chapter 5, oh, verse 19. He says to wit that God was in Christ. So it was God who was in Christ. It was God who was in, in Christ. When he went into the temple, it was the God who was inside him that scattered the tables, that overthrew the temple, that overthrew the table, and got out the sheep, and got out the cows. It was the God inside him. It was the greater one inside him. Now that greater one. He's not in the temple of Jerusalem. He's not in Jesus alone. But he's in you and I. I said he's in you and I. I said he's in you and I. I said he's in, he in you and I. I said he's in you and I. Will somebody tell the person the greater one is living inside you? Will another person tell the person the greater one is living inside you? So you are not alone. And you are not alone. You may not feel God, but God is there with you. You may not see anything around you that He is there, but He is there with you. So Paul said, Paul said, What shall we say? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? The good news we have in the New Testament is that God is not only with us. When God is with us, we know that any demon that comes against us, they will be afraid. We know that if He is for us, any enemy comes against us, He will defeat that enemy for us. But we have something better. He's not just with us. He's not just for us. But he's also now living on the inside of us. Hallelujah. When we go out, he's moving out with us. When we come in, he's coming, he's coming in with us. When we talk, he's talking to us. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 16 says, And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. I will be their God. And they shall be my children. So now God living inside you. Meaning that through the good you do, people get to know God. Through your hands, God can touch people. Through your eyes, God can see people. Through your mind, God can think about people. We have something better in the New Testament. If you believe, shout a big amen. So last Friday, I told you that this greater one inside us, the first thing he does when he comes into us is to drive us, to destroy the works of the devil. When he comes into us, he drives us. The greater one, he is a driver. And when he comes, he will drive you. He will drive you. He drove Jesus and he drove them out of the temple. Now that he's in you, anything that is inside your body that you don't like, the same Holy Spirit can drive you also to drive them out. Somebody shout, I drive them out. Shout it again, I drive them out. Shout it again, I drive them out. In the name of Jesus, if you believe, shout a bigger amen. Today, when you step into your hostel, when you step into your house, so fear. When you step into your family house, every time you get there, let any evil that is there, let any demon that is there, let them walk out in the name of Jesus. I said, let them leave the place in the name of Jesus. If there is sickness in your house, today when you step home, let that sickness walk out of that house. If you believe, shout a big amen. Let somebody tell the person, drive them all out.
But the second thing the greater one does in us. Which I want to live with you. On this resurrection Sunday morning. When Jesus said. In John chapter 2 verse 19. He said destroy this temple. Destroy this temple. And in three days. I will raise it again. I will build it again. That word raise it again. Talks about I will arouse it again. I will quicken it again. I will make it alive again. You can make it dead. But I will bring life to it. The same spirit that was in Jesus as he was speaking this word. The same spirit is also inside you now. And I come to declare to somebody today whatever the devil is trying to kill, whatever the devil is trying to arouse, to destroy, to kill, I come to tell somebody today you have the greater one on the inside of you. And by the spirit of God, you can quicken that thing. You can bring that thing back to life again. You can arouse Arouse it back to life again. He wants to arouse it to death. But I come to tell somebody today, you can arouse it to life in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody receive the resurrection power, the resurrection grace. Receive the resurrection anointing. Anything that devil is trying to kill around you, receive the grace of God today to raise it back to life again. If you believe, shout a bigger amen. And clap your hands together for Jesus. Turn to somebody and tell the person, I'll raise it again. Watch somebody and tell the person again, I'll raise it again. My subject this morning is, I'll raise it again. Shout it again, I'll raise it again. Shout it again, I'll raise it again. Anything the devil has killed, I declare we are raising it, raising it again. In a relationship, the devil has tried to bury, I declare we are raising it again. In a building, the devil has pulled down, I declare we are raising it again. Receive the grace to raise it again. Receive the grace to bring it to life again. If you believe, shout a bigger amen. I am preaching better than you are shouting. I said I am preaching better than you are shouting. Anything the devil has destroyed, receive the power today. Receive the grace today. Receive the anointing today to bring it back to life again. Anything that is dying in your life, any business that is dying, any marriage that is dying, any family that is dying, any relationship that is dying, receive the grace of God to bring it back to life again. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare to somebody today, you are the agency of God. You have become the agent of God. Everywhere you go, whatever dies, you bring life to it. They can destroy, but you will not destroy. But when they destroy, you will bring it back to life. I come to tell somebody today, whatever the devil destroys, you have the power, you have the capacity, you have the ability to bring it back to life again. Somebody today receive the grace of God. Receive the anointing. The anointing of the Lord is falling upon you. So raise it back to life again. The devil killed your husband, but another husband is on the way. The devil killed your wife, but another wife is on the way. The devil destroyed your marriage, but another marriage is on the way. The devil destroyed your business, but another business is on the way. I come to tell somebody today, you have what it takes to bring it back to life again. Receive the grace of God to raise it up again. To raise it up again. To raise it up again. Lift up your voice and shout yes. Yes. Clap your hands together for Jesus. Please be seated. In that John chapter 2 verse 19. Why Jesus says. Destroy this temple. And I'll raise it again. It tells you that there are two groups of people. There are the destroyers. But thank God. That when they destroy. There are the people. Who will build it again. And I came to tell somebody today. You are part of the builders again. I said you are part of the builders again. I said you are part of the builders again. If you believe, shout a big amen. There are some people before you, when they enter an office, they destroy the system. They destroy everything there. But when you get there, it doesn't have the power to go down again. When you get there, as the 
agent of God, as the agent of the Holy Spirit, somebody who is carrying the Holy Spirit, whatever they destroy, you will build it again. Receive the grace to build it again. As I receive the grace to build it again, somebody shall I build again. Be seated. Then there are the scatterers. There are some people they scatter. When they enter a family, they can scatter the family. Scatter everybody. And everybody runs away. No respect. But thank God that when they scatter, there are the people who by the Spirit of God can gather again. Anybody the devil scattered away from you. Anybody the devil sucked from your life. Receive the grace of God. Today, to gather them again, to gather them again. I see your sons and your daughters, they are running to you. I see your children running to you. I see your helpers running to you. I see your friends running to you. Any human being they are scattered from you, I declare you are gathering them again. Any good thing they took from you, you are gathering them again. Receive the grace of God to gather them again, to pull them together again. Somebody shout, Yes! They took one car, but I see five cars on the way coming. I said they took ten cars, but I see twenty cars on the way coming. They took thousand Ghana cities, but I see a hundred thousand Ghana cities on the way coming to you. Whatever they scattered from you, God is bringing a double portion. Receive it today in the name of Jesus. If you believe in Sarius, yes. I'm preaching better than you are responding. I said, whatever they scattered, you are gathering it again. I said, 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 you are gathering it again. Somebody ran away with your hundred thousand Ghana. Ten million is on the way coming. Ten million is on the way coming. Receive the grace of God. Go gather again. Somebody shout, I gather again. Shout it again, I gather again. Shout it again, I gather again. Scatter, what do you do? When they scatter, what do you do? When they destroy, what do you do? I build it again. Somebody shout yes. yes. Please be seated. Then that were destroyed. It also means to kill. But thank God that when they kill, they are the people who will bring life. Thank God that when they kill, they are the people who will give life. Who will bring life. Somebody's marriage is dying. Somebody's relationship is dying. Somebody's business is dying. There is no more life. When you go to the right place, there is no happiness. There is no joy. Because the life has been sad out. Today when you walk out of this temple, you are going to bring life. I see somebody who is going to bring life. You are taking life to your marriage. You are taking life to your business. You are taking life to your school. You are taking life to your business. You are taking life to your family. You are taking life to your house. You are taking life to your friends. You are taking life to your brothers. You are taking life to your sisters. You are taking life to everybody around you. Receive the life of God inside you. Receive the life giving power. Receive the grace of God to go and be a life giver. If you believe, shout a bigger amen. Clap your hands together for Jesus. Are you in the church or you have gone home? So when they kill, what do you do? You bring life. Turn to somebody tell the person, I am bringing life. Tell another person, I am bringing life. Wait for another person, tell the person, I am bringing life. Anything that dies, I declare life comes to it now in the name of Jesus. I said I declare life comes to it now in the name of Jesus. As your pastor, I declare over your life, I declare over your marriage, I declare over your business, I declare over your family, I declare over your husband, I declare over your wife, I declare over everything around you. Anything the devil tried to kill, I speak life to it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive life in your marriage, receive life in your family, receive life in your house, receive life in your business, receive life in your workplace, receive life in your school, receive life in your education, receive life in the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout yes! Yes! Please be seated. I'm preaching better than you are responding. Some of you are still in the house. Wave somebody and tell the person, my neighbor. Anything that was dying, here is the life giver. Tell the person, here is the life giver. Tell the person, here is the life giver. 
year, I remember one day me somebody died Obi -wi. and they told me that they were taking the person to the mortuary. mortuary. So I said, I'm on the way coming. No, no, when I said I was on the way coming, they went to tell the mortuary man, our pastor is coming. Cancel all the protocol. The dead person will come back to life again. <laughs> They said I'm coming to give life. So when I got there, and with one happiness, one. they welcomed me at the gate. The gate and and they, they took me to the dead body. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. They saw me as a, as a, as a resurrection from the dead. But it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. You know how many people have called you to come and resurrect the dead before? From today, when things are dying, I see them coming for you. I see them coming for you. I see them coming for you. I said, I see them coming for you. I said, I see them coming for you. When businesses are dying, when marriages are dying, I see them coming to call you. That any time you touch a business, life comes back to it. Receive the grace of God. May you be a life giver. May you be a life saver. May you be a life giver. May you be a life saver. I see ten people in the building today. When you walk out of the temple today, anything that was dead, anything they gave up on, I should touch it today. It will come back to life again. In the mighty name of Jesus, may you be a life giver. Let others be the destroyers, but you'll be the builder. Let others be the scatterers. But you'll be the gatherer. Let others be the ones uh, that will kill and destroy. But you will be the one to give life. Uh, I come to tell somebody today. Maybe your mother has lost hope. Uh, maybe your father has lost hope. Uh, maybe everybody has given up. Uh, because nobody is making it. But I come to tell somebody today. You will be the life giver. You will be the life bringer. Your mother will look at you. Your father will look at you. Your aunties will look at you. And they will have hope again. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. I see somebody to pay. You will go back to your village and you will help an auntie. You will help a cousin. You will help a brother. You will help a sister. The grace of God is coming upon somebody to pay. I declare you are a life giver. You are becoming an expert in giving life. Whatever is dead, they will call you to come and give life to it. Whenever marriage is dead, they will call you. They will say we have heard that any marriage you enter into, life comes back into that marriage and when you enter surely life will come back into that marriage I came to tell somebody to say that when families break down I see them running to your house they will run to your address they will come and call you and they will say we know that whenever you enter a house whenever you enter a family and the family is dying the family comes back to life may you be the light of your family may you be the light of your brothers may you be the light of your sisters receive it in the name of Jesus, ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be healed. I prophesy to somebody today, your time to die has not come because you are going to give life to several other people. Receive the grace of God. Somebody shout yes! Yes! Please be seated. So, they destroy. It's almost safe. When I say they destroy, you say I build. So they destroy. I build. They scatter. I scatter. Uh, gather. So they destroy. What do you do? We'll you see. build. They scatter. Then you gather. gather. They scatter. I gather. They scatter. I gather. They scatter. I gather. They scatter. I come home. I said they scatter. They come home. Your money is coming back to you. Your friends are coming back into your life. Your helpers are on the way coming to you. Somebody to open the door is coming to you. Your gatherers are all coming to you. If you believe, shout a bigger yes. They scatter. Let me see. They scatter. They scatter. They scatter. And then they kill. And then you give life. They kill. I give life. They kill. They kill. The kill. I see you giving life in the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout a big yes. Clap your hands together for Jesus. Wave somebody, tell the person my name. I am a life giver. Tell the person I am a life giver. Wave somebody again, tell the person I am a life giver. The final one is that they lose. 
Almost the loose things. Almost it means two things. So the half two more. The loose. As in the untie. And then I bind. And no kabo kabo. I bind. Almost sani no kabo. I bind. Somebody say amen. Amen. Two people who are together. Who are bound together. Somebody can come in between them and lose them. But when they lose, there is somebody who can bind them together again. Receive the grace of God to be a binder together. May you be a binder together. May you be a binder together. I said, may you be a binder together. If you believe, shout a big amen. People at the, at the top, they, I think they are resisting me. Okay. Wave your neighbor and tell your neighbor, my neighbor. When they lose, yes, I bind together. Receive the grace to bind together. Yes, I said, receive the grace to bind together. Yes, receive the grace to bind together. Yes, In the mighty yes, name of Jesus. Yes, Anything they have untied and declared today, they are coming back to your house and you are tying it again. You are binding it again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the grace of God to be a binder together. Those whom God has joined together, let no man put a Santa. But I come to tell somebody today, when you put it a Santa, you can bind it together. Receive the grace of God to bind it together, to put it together. If you finish all yes. And finally, I will start preaching you. So, just come at this. We come at this. 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 Come at When they lose it, Come at this. Come at this. Come at this. So the other loses L O O S E. This one is so L O S E. Where's so Ushri? Whatever is missing in the family, you will be the one finding it. I said, You'll be the one finding it. I said, You'll be the one finding it. Therefore, do I prophesy over you where nobody has gone to in the family before? Receive the grace to go there. I said, Receive the grace to go there. Whatever house nobody has built in the family before, receive the grace to build that house. Receive the grace to build that house in the mighty name of Jesus. And don't Nobody in your family has walked through before. Receive the grace of God to walk through that door in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody today, you are receiving the grace to know the airport. You will know the airport like your bedroom. You will know the airport like your sitting room. You will know the airport like your bathroom. You will know the airport like your backyard. Like 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 Receive the grace of God. Receive the grace of God today in the name of Jesus. Whatever is difficult, whatever is hard for people from your house, for people from your family and the not to pay, it shall be easy for you. Receive the grace of God. If you believe, shout yes! Yes! Clap your hands together for Jesus and we will see. But listen, I want to say some very serious things to you this morning. So the devil, when he says that, when Jesus said that they, they should destroy, all he meant is that when they destroy or they pull down he will build it again when they scatter he will gather it again when they kill he will give life to it when they lose he will bind it together and then when they lose he will find it again. He will make again. When people make losses, businesses people do that they lose. As for you, when you do that business, you will get a lot of profit. As you will get a lot of profit. As you will get a lot of profit. When they say when people stay in this area, things don't work for them. People don't buy for them. You will sell in that same area, and people will buy for you. You will build a house. You will buy cars. You will rise from there. If you believe, shout a bigger amen. So I've defined the word destroy to you. And I've defined also what it means to raise it again. Or to build it again. What are some of the things that the devil destroys? What are some of the things the devil destroys? When Jesus said, destroy this temple. And I will build it again. In verse 21. John 2, 21. He says, this speak ye of the temple of his body. Or he spake of the temple of his body. He was talking about the temple of his body. 
So the body there, number one, it refers to his flesh, his physical body. And sometimes in life, the devil wants to destroy your body, your physical body, with evil diseases, with weaknesses, with lusts, with sinful natures, with things, anything he can use to just destroy the body. He will try to do it to him. Many of you, you are a vessel unto Anna. God has chosen you to help a lot of people, to bless nations, to bless thousands, not even, if not even millions. God has it in your destiny to be a helper of many. But the devil is against you, fighting your body with diseases, with sinful things, things that he knows can break your body down, things he knows can defy your body. So that whatever God wants to do, he will not be able to do. But I came to tell somebody today, if the devil can touch your body, if the devil can touch your flesh, you have the greater one on the inside. You have the spirit of God on the inside. If the devil touches, you can command that devil to take his dirty hands off your body, to take his dirty hands off your flesh. I came to tell somebody today, any addiction, anything you are addicted to, anything that was fighting you, in your body, when that sickness or whatever, I declare today, let them fall off in the name of Jesus. Let them fall off your body. Let them fall off your flesh. Let them fall off your body. Let them fall off your flesh. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe, shout a big amen. Now the Bible says of Jesus, in Isaiah chapter 52, Isaiah chapter 52, Verse 14. He said, his visage was so mad. His visage, his appearance. In fact, his face was so distorted. More than any man. And his form was also mad. Also distorted. That if you saw Jesus on the cross, you couldn't tell whether he was a human being or he was a dog or he was whatever. When you saw him on the cross, everything around him, you know, the Roman crucifixion is a very cruel thing. Do you know why they lash you with the Metallic with, with the metallic rod. They lash you like that. With the mind that your back will tear open. Your back will tear open. And when your back tears open, and they put that bare back that has been torn open upon the cross, upon the wood. I mean, you will feel it. You will feel the pain on the inside. Then they'll stretch your hand and stretch this one also and nail it. No one is in it. Then they'll nail your feet. That one is also nothing. So when they raise it, when they raise it now, because of how they are pitting you, because of how they have, they have battered your body, the whole body begins to pull down. The law of gravity begins to pull your body down. And as it is pulling your body down, your hands is as if it is tearing apart. And as it's tearing apart, you can't breathe well again. Your breath becomes distorted. You will be in so much pain because your ribs are pulling down. Very excruciating pain. Very painful death. So usually, without touching them, just by beating them, by hanging them on the cross, within a few hours, they die themselves. But Jesus did not die early. He was there because he needed to pay all the price. He had to pay. He had to take care of everything. And when they finished taking care of everything, just before they came, that they would break his leg, he yielded up the ghost. And he did it as an example to us. That if we can lay down our bodies for him and for the Father, the same way they destroyed his body, but he was able to get our back. We can also get our bodies back. We can also get our flesh back. That is why I came today 
with confidence, with boldness to do somebody. It doesn't matter what the devil has done to your body. Sometimes the devil can shake your body with sickness. You can feel so much pain. You can be weak. You can feel broken. You can feel tattered. But thank God, the same spirit that resurrected Christ from the dead is dwelling inside you also. I said the same spirit that resurrected Christ from the dead is dwelling inside you also. I see your body coming back to life. I said I see your body coming back to life. I see your body coming back to life. I see your waist coming back to life. I see your liver coming back to life. I see your lungs coming back to life. I see your ribs coming back to life. If you believe, shout a big amen. Clap your hands together for Jesus. Let me show you something. So, how did this broken body? How did it come back to life? Look at the evidence in the scripture. First Peter chapter three verse eighteen. First Peter chapter three verse eighteen. First Peter chapter three verse eighteen. It says, for Christ has suffered for sins. The just for the unjust. That he might bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh. But quickened by the spirit. They killed him physically. But it was the Holy Spirit. That mended his body. So much so. That when Mary Magdalene saw him. Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene thought. That he was the gardener. Because the body now has been healed. As if nothing had happened to it. As if nothing had happened to it. Now this same spirit is what is dwelling inside you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, it says, What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and that ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a the price. Therefore, glorify God. In your body oh, and in your spirit which are God. So the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead is also dwelling inside you. you. Now this is the magic. What does he do? In verse 11 of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. He says, now if the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead, he says he shall quicken your mortal body. He will vitalize it. He will revive it. He will give it life again. Wherever your body was failing, whichever organ is failing inside your body, I came to declare to somebody today, receive a revitalization. Receive a quickening inside your body. Receive a quickening inside your body. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody's kidneys are coming back to life. Somebody's kidneys are coming back to life. Somebody's waist is coming back to life. Somebody's lungs are coming back to life. Somebody's ribs are coming back to life. Somebody's heart is coming back to life. If you believe, shout a bigger yes. When somebody and tell the person, my body is back to life. Wherever they try to affect your body today, I declare deliverance is your portion. I said deliverance is your portion. I said deliverance is your portion. Deliverance is your portion. Deliverance is your portion. If you believe, shout I believe. And clap your hands together for Jesus. So the same spirit dwells inside you. That is why sometimes when you wake up in the morning. You have to thank God for the quickening power of the Holy Spirit inside you. Thank God for the quickening power of the Holy Spirit you. So when they destroyed the body of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit brought back his life again. Brought back his body again. If you have that same spirit, your body will never break down. I declare over your life, I declare over everybody in this church, it's the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead, when inside you, then by that same spirit every single day you will receive a quickening inside your body receive the grace of God today receive the grace of God today receive the grace of God today in the mighty name of Jesus receive life inside your body I speak to rheumatism to leave your body I speak to asthma to leave your body I speak to diabetes to leave your body I speak to hypertension to leave your body I speak to hernia to leave 
your body, I speak to any other disease inside your body, affecting any organ of your body. I command them to leave your body now. In the mighty name of Jesus, your breast will be free from sickness. Your back will be, will be free from sickness. Your abdomen will be free from sickness. Your legs will be free from sickness. Receive the revitalizing power of the Holy Spirit today. If you believe, so I believe. And clap your hands together for Jesus. When somebody and tell your neighbor, my neighbor, this is your body. I prophesy to it. It will never break down. Tell the person it will never break down. Tell the person it will never break down. Tell the person it will never break down. So when you say destroy this temple and I'll raise it again. It's not dependent on your pastor. It's not dependent on your elder. It depends on you. Today may you be empowered. I said may you be empowered. Whenever you feel any pain inside your body, may you be so empowered that you will speak and you will see the change inside your body. Receive this grace from God in the name of Jesus. Number two, Another thing that can be destroyed is the body. The body of believers. The body of believers. Now, when Jesus and I'll raise it again in three days. What he was also saying was that not just my body, but all the bodies of the saints which have killed from the Old Testament. The day I resurrect, I will bring life to all of them. I will resurrect all of them. I will bring life to all of them. Bring to all of them. So the Bible says in Matthew chapter 27, the verse number 53, it says they came out of the grave after his resurrection they went into the holy city and they appeared unto many they appeared unto many listen today that same grace that same power that Jesus had to resurrect his body through the same holy spirit that same grace is upon you too that the same way Jesus resurrected the body of Abraham resurrected the body of Lazarus resurrected the body of all the other people who had died with him who died before he came receive the grace of God to help somebody in your family to help somebody in your school to help somebody in your business to help them to rise receive this grace from God today in the mighty name of Jesus receive this same grace from God today if you believe shall I receive clap your hands together for Jesus I'm preaching better than you are clapping and better than you are shouting. Listen, somebody's life is dependent on you. Somebody's life is dependent on you. For some of you, it may be your auntie. For some of you, it may be a friend. For some of you, it may be a sister. For some of you, it may be an uncle. Somebody's life is so hinged to you. So when you go up, they can also go up. I see you becoming a helper. A helper of the helpless. May you be one who trust a lot of people. That when you go up, you'll draw a lot of people to go up with you. Receive the grace to help people financially. Receive the grace to help people spiritually. Receive the grace to help people physically. Receive the grace to help people to provide houses for people, to buy cars for people, to do good for people. If you believe, shout a bigger amen. I want to get to the place where I'll be giving cars to people. I want the people who come and I'll just give them a car. I want to give them your car. It's the kid your car. Receive the same grace in the name of Jesus. May you become a giver of a car. May you become a giver of good things. Whatever God blesses you with, receive the grace to bless other people too with it. If you believe, shall I believe? Wait, somebody tell the person, I'm not coming out alone. We will never tell the person, I'm not coming out alone. Today I declare over you, as you come out, your family members are also coming out. Your friends are also coming out. Your brothers are also coming out. Your sisters are also coming out. Whatever you overcome, you overcome for all of them. Whatever you defeat, you defeat for all of them. Whatever you destroy, you destroy for all of them. Whatever door you open, you open for all of them. Receive this grace from God. 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 If you believe, shall I believe? You know, recently, somebody had 
I mean, somebody came to the church. And when the person came, I remembered him that he was the uncle of somebody who got married in the church. So the uncle after the service came to see and me. He said that I came to church today because, like I said to you on, so my, my, on, on my daughter's wedding oh, day, that it doesn't happen commonly in our family. So you that somebody will come and do wedding so we for a lady in the house before, before they have, have sex it hasn't happened before. Before. Usually they will just get pregnant or something will just happen and to them. Be but she was the first but person. Know the kind. And I told you and I that sure. she has opened the door. So be a I said, really? She said, he said, yes. I, I see, I. Old man. Open then he said, I just came from, for another so wedding. wedding back, so just said, yesterday. I told you that she opened the door. So, be so as she has opened the door, be now her auntie and also has gotten so 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 married and so I came for the wedding. But I decided to come to your church to come and say thank you. I came to tell somebody Today, as you open the door, you are opening it for everybody around you. Receive the grace of God today. Receive this grace from God today. May you open the door for your family members, your sisters, your brothers, your uncles, your aunties. Receive the grace of God to open the door for all of them. If you believe, shout a bigger yes. As you open the door, may all of them come through. Receive the grace of God today. If you believe, shout a bigger amen. Because of you, your mother will travel outside. Because of you, your father will go somewhere. He has never been before. Because of you, your sisters, I declare God opens a door for them. Because of you, your brothers, God opens a door for them. Because of you, aunties and uncles, people who are even far away from you, I declare you'll be a blessing to all of them. Receive this grace from God today. If you believe, shout I believe. Wave somebody and tell the person, my neighbor. I ain't coming out alone. Wave another person, another person, tell the person, I am not coming out alone. Your children are coming out of you. I said, your children are coming out of you. And they are coming out with you. If you believe, shout a bigger amen. Somebody who can see your children failing. Today, I overturn the tables. 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 That same child, you will see glory in that child. You will see glory with that child. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe, shout I believe. Look, I feel like I'm pushing a lot in the preaching today. Wave somebody and tell your neighbor, my neighbor. <laughs> tell the person, my neighbor. I am not coming out alone. That is why I have determined this morning. As your pastor, I am not coming out alone. As I come out, everybody is coming out. Receive the grace of God. Anywhere you are hitting, anywhere they were hiding you, anywhere they had covered you, and you are not seeing any good. I declare today the graves are open in the mighty name of Jesus. The prison door is open. The doors of limitation they are taken out. I see somebody jumping out. I see somebody coming out. I see somebody pulling out in the mighty name of Jesus. May you rise and shine. 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 If you believe, shout I believe. And clap your hands together for Jesus. Wave somebody again and tell your neighbor, my neighbor. I am not alone in coming out. Tell the person again, I'm not alone in coming out. It's a good place to clap your hands together for Jesus. Then number three. Number three. When Jesus said, uh, was referring to the temple of his body. He was also talking about the church. He was talking about the church. The people of God. As a group. As a group. As a group. As a group. Today, as your pastor, I declare anybody in this church that is being killed, that is being destroyed, that is being pulled down, that things are being scattered around you. Today, I declare as a group, as a church, as a church, not one person, not two people, but everybody in the church, I declare life comes to you again. Receive the life of God. 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 If you believe, shout a bigger amen. Clap your hands together for Jesus. 
Let me give you only one king that can help you to raise whatever is destroyed. Only one key. Only one key. And that key is in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. It says, Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. But be filled with the Spirit. He says, be full of the Spirit. How? Speaking to yourself. Learn to speak to yourself. Learn to do what? Speak to yourself. When somebody tell the person, learn to speak to yourself. Learn to speak to yourself. And whenever you speak to yourself, he says you become full of the same Holy Spirit that resurrected Christ from the dead. You, be, you become so full of him and you will have the power. You will have the grace. And whatever is destroyed, you will build it again. Whatever they scatter, you will gather it again. Whatever they kill, you will bring life to it again. Whatever they lose, you will bind it again. And whatever you lost, you will get it again. Learn to speak to yourself. Jesus resurrected from the dead. Yes, Christ, sorry for, for. When the angel saw Mary Magdalene, and Mary Magdalene the angel said to her, he said, He is resurrected. As he said, as he said, what he had been saying is what had come to pass. Sometimes you look yourself in the mirror, stand in front of the mirror, and begin to speak to yourself, begin to talk to yourself, begin to speak to yourself. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Don't wait for anybody to come and pamper you. And can't you be some If you are waiting for human beings to tell you good things. Oh. The day they are not happy with you, they will tell you something nasty. The day they are not happy with you, they will frown their faces at you. The day they are not happy with you, the day they are not happy with you. They will gossip with, oh, bus, with, with, with somebody about your life. Learn to sometimes just stand in front of the mirror and speak to yourself. A psalm is it's a word of inspiration. Your mind is that the psalm is talking about only the psalm in the Bible. That's not the only one is talking about. But sometimes stand in front of the mirror. All the good things that comes by inspiration you begin to declare you begin to speak it. you begin to say it over your life I am a chosen generation a royal person I am an holy nation I am a peculiar person Christ redeemed me to be a king I am for the head I will never be the king I will be above I will never be beneath I will I will never be afraid. I will not be afraid of sickness. I am strong. I am healthy. As I step out today, I step out as a king. I will do well. My father may have failed, but that is his story. My mother might have failed. That is his story. I am different. My story is different because I am a peculiar, a peculiar nation, a peculiar people. I am different. My story is different. I serve God differently. I love God differently. Therefore, I have another story to tell. Was he telling lies? I have another story to tell. When they touch me, I will never go down. They may laugh at me. They may mock at me. They may criticize me. They may accuse me. But I'll still keep moving forward. I'll still keep moving forward. I'll still keep moving forward. I will never stop. They are backbiters because they are behind me. Because they are behind me, I will never stop. I will keep moving so they can bite more. I will still keep moving so they can bite more. That is why their name is Bike Butters. Bike Biters. I will still, I will still keep going and let them be biting. I will still keep rising. Let them be undermining. The higher I go, the more blows I give them to undermine. But I will keep rising. I am the head. I will never be the tail. If you believe so, Sister Nabre, 
Wave somebody tell the person talk to yourself in the mirror. Wave another person tell the person talk to yourself in the mirror. Wave somebody again tell the person my neighbor talk to yourself in the mirror. I speak to somebody today. Any demon that tells you that you are nothing. Any demon that was telling you that you are nothing. That nothing good will come out of you. That demon is bound in the name of Jesus. That demon is cleared out of the way. If you believe, shout yes. Yes. Listen, I used to tell you that I used to have a teacher. Yeah, yeah, Look, that woman broke my spirit. Oh, when I was in JHS 1. Oh, JHS 1. I can't tell you the words. Me, me can't, but can't. When I use the words, it's as if I'm using it to myself me again. Can't, me can't, me can't, me she said all the negative oh, words can't, you can. And she will lash me. No, she she will, will beat me. Oh, be boom, me. Hey. She beat me. Oh, boom, me ah. I got to the place where I had no confidence I again. The only thing that was going for me was my head. Was my mind. Exams I wrote. I was always doing well. But I remember when I was growing up, sometimes I would go to my mother's mirror. I remember that mark is still on my mother's wardrobe. Recently when I went to the house, I went to check it. So sometimes I would go to the, the wardrobe and I would stand in front of the wardrobe. And when I stand there, I look at myself in the mirror and I will say, ah, all these things this woman is saying can it be true then I tell myself no it cannot be true it cannot be true if I were useless I would not be standing as the person who is going for the quiz for the whole school winning spelling bees for the school and, 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 and I mean winning accolades for the school in fact one day they gave me a lot of books for the school I went to steal some and took it home because I was angry they didn't like me so I went to steal a lot of it so I was standing in front of the mirror. So one day, when I was standing in front of the mirror, a voice said to me to prove to you that what the woman is saying is not true. This is your height at which you are. Mark it by the wardrobe. One day you will come back and when you stand in front of this wardrobe, you are taller than that man. So I went closer to the wardrobe and I took uh, whatever knife and I marked I marked my place. I was around 13 years or 12 years. I mark my place <laughs> on the wardrobe. <laughs> so every day, I will come. I was getting this kind because I wasn't increasing. So year after year, I was trying. I wasn't <laughs> increasing. But one day, I got to visit my mother. My mother wasn't well. So I was laying with her on the bed. So I was laying with her on the bed. Then I turned my eye and I saw the mark on the wardrobe. Then I got up. This was about seven years ago. Then I got up. And I'm sorry. Then I went to the world. When I went there, the height was around this. And I heard the voice of the spirit. Say, have you have you seen what I told you? I told you never to believe what they were saying. Never to believe what the woman was saying. Never to believe what the woman was declaring. Over your lives, I have proved it to you. Don't believe the lies people say about you. Don't believe the lies people say about you. They came to Jesus, they said, He said, He would destroy the temple. Meanwhile, He didn't say so. He didn't say so. Stand in front of the mirror and talk to yourself. Somebody tells you that you are not beautiful. Your leg is key. Hey! Monkey no fine. Monkey no fine. He fine for you. He mommy. Stand in front of the mirror and declare good things about your life. Lift up a right and declare after me. I will be the head. I will never be the tail. Anything that was done around my life, I speak life to it. I bring life to it in the name of Jesus. I will never go down. I will never go down. I will keep rising from one level to a higher level. I will enlarge. 
to the left and to the right. I will do well in life. I will do well in life. I will do well in life. Failure will never be my portion. Failure will never be my portion. I am the best in whatever I do. I will be the best in whatever I do. Everywhere I go, I shine. I shine. I am the light of the world. I will be the light everywhere I go. In the name of Jesus, if you believe, shall I believe? Clap your hands together. And when you open your mouth and you are speaking this word, keep speaking them until you get filled with the Holy Spirit. And one day, like it happened to me, so many years will come to pass. And when you look back and you remember where you used to be before and where you are now, you see that the gap is so wide. I said, you see that the gap is so wide. If you believe, shout a bit, amen. I remember we were in a compound house. Hey, and people, the landlady, were insulted. Insult my father. Insult my mother. Insult with the children. And we were also stubborn. We were also stubborn. But the woman, my God, sometimes she can wake up in the morning. No provocation. No provocation. We so just come and sit in the middle of the house. I'm talking about a house of about 13 tenants. Then she starts screaming on top of her voice. Calling my father's no, name. Calling my father's no, name. Go out. Let everything that is, that is following you. Let them follow you out of my house. My oh my. So I started saying to myself. I started saying to myself, as for compound house, compound house I, I declare, if I enter into one, I have so not helped myself. Be, I, mean one. I told myself, if I enter into one, I have not helped myself. I won't enter. I won't go into any. So I told my mother, when I told my mother, she was in tears. But no, she was ah. But what I have said, how has it offended you in any way? She said she is feeling sorry for herself. I said, no, 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 no. It's because of the woman. It's because of the woman. Then we moved out of there. Then we got to so to and so to You know, my mother and my dad. The only place that had a door in the three bedroom house, three bedroom house was the sitting room, a sitting room and their bedroom where I was going to be. be there was no door there. Don't be any there was no door. door any and the main door too. And the main door no there was nothing. And, also she and then there was another door. And the door, door one there was nothing. And so in the night, and the night when they go to bed, I will come and turn the cupboard. The, the cupboard, no the the cupboard, the kitchen cupboard. The kitchen cupboard. I will come and turn it my no to cover that my door. My door. And then then I'll carry some plywood. Would be some things and take it to the main door. door. Carry the kitchen stool. Put it behind it. And close it. And I'll go and lie there. My own door there. Forget about it. And the toilet. Now, the toilet you will have to squat on the wood, whatever. Just that written. something small. And we were there. And my mom will be sad. She said, so why are we here? So let's go and rest again. I said to my mother, mother, I like it. I like this place like that. that. It is better than to go to a compound house and somebody will be shouting over you. I promise you, I promise you I will never enter into a compound house. house. So I was surprised. Well, one day my mother herself said to me, me, what you said, you have done it. What you said, you have done it. it. When I got my first salary, my first salary was only 400 Ghana cities. When I got it, I paid my time, 100 Ghana. Then the 300 cities I was left. I told my boss, I'm looking for a house. I'm looking for a land. I told everybody, I'm looking for a land. Then there was a sister in the church. And I saw him. We said, Well, she knows somebody who sells, who sells land. So we went. Where we went? How much? Saying huge amount. As I'll buy it. 
I said, I'll buy it. The man said, Hey, you, can you buy it? I said, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. How much do you have? I gave him 400 Ghana cities. 400 Ghana cities. He mentioned thousands of Ghana cities. Of I gave him only 400 Ghana cities. But what I said, gradually, it was coming to pass. 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 I challenge somebody today. Don't blame anybody for where you are now. Don't blame anybody for where you are now. But be responsible for where you are going. Some of you where you are now, you don't like it. Where you are sleeping now, you don't like it. Tell yourself, a day is coming. I'll be in a better place. I'll be in my three-bedroom house. I will be in this house. I will have that. I will have this. I will have that. I will give my children. This type of future. Say it. Wave your neighbor, tell him my neighbor. Open your mouth and say it. Open your mouth and say it. Open your mouth and say it. Today, may you be empowered. May you be strengthened. The more you speak, the more the spirit comes. The more you speak, the more the spirit comes. So one day, see the magic. So that one day, some people rose against me in my area. Oh, my area. I right? think Pastor Eli was there. Pastor, Eli was Pastor James was Pastor there. Pastor James was I told them, me catch up, say, even if you break down my house today, I'll build another one. I don't know why I told them, but they just came out of my house. And I told them me catch up, that if you break it, me God will give me another me one. Me That's my belief. That's my faith. Me me you know, what have you been saying? As the ones that what have you been saying? As the one sitting beside me, what have you been saying? I told them because the sure. enemy stole my car. God brought another one. Yeah, if I need a car, I'll get it today. Yeah, if I want a car, I'll get it yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, so I, told, I told them in the yeah, meeting. Sure, more meeting. Where is Pastor Eli? He was there. I told them if you take it away, so far, I'll get another one. The devil came to steal. We got another one. No loan. Alone, no loan from anywhere. God just brought it. Open your mouth and speak. And the resurrection spirit will arise inside you. He will wake up inside you. And the things you are declaring, he will cause it to come to pass. Will somebody tell the person, open your mouth and speak it? Tell the person, open your mouth and speak it. I have finished preaching. Start your preaching. Why don't you go to three people and tell them, my neighbor, open your mouth and speak. Open your mouth. Go to three people, tell them, open your mouth and speak. Open your mouth and speak. Open your mouth and speak. The person who organized the people by the time I realized a wind had carried him from the area to another place. Organizing from the area from maybe a pigeon that could be cry. A wind had carried him if away. Maybe if baby I pigeon, if you walk Listen, away. if somebody jokes with you, so be too, wah, wah. the person is joking with if God. I said the person is joking if with God. I said the person is joking if with God. Lift up your right hand and clap for me. I will be the head. Me if I don't say I will be the head, say I am the head. Me me the head. Never the tail. I am okay. the first. Me Never the last. Me me the I am strong. I am healthy. I move forward. Come and move. All things are working together. For my good, I will see the glory of the Lord. I will never go down. 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 I am rising. I am making it in the name of Jesus. The sky is the limit in the name of Jesus. Everybody connected to me. As I go up, I go with all of them. As I rise, I rise with all of them. In the name of Jesus, I am not leaving anybody behind. We are rising together. We are going together. We are rising together. We are going together as individuals, as a group. I declare we are rising together. I don't care what my father saw. I don't care what my mother saw. My story shall be different. It shall be better. It shall be greater. It shall be greater. It shall be greater. I declare. I am becoming great. I will become greater. 
yes, greater yes, and greater, yes, greater yes, and greater yes, yes, is my testimony yes, yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, I am moving forward yes, in every area yes, of my life yes, yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, Somebody lift up your voice, yes, begin to declare them. Yes, Speak them over your life. Yes, Speak them over your body now. Yes, Lift up your two hands as you go, go with the grace of God. The Lord who has blessed you and spoken to you that you also have the power to raise up anything that was destroyed. But that same God go ahead of you. Let it be a consuming fire before you. All you do this week is blessed of God. You will see the glory of God like never before. In Jesus mighty name. Be empowered Shedding. Be strengthened. Shedding. Be strengthened. Shedding. Be delivered from all evil. In the attack of the enemy against any of you, I cancel it now in the name of Jesus. For anybody who is not yet born again, the Lord save your soul today. In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody shout a big amen.